All right. I should be live on my main channel now. All right. For a little bit of context, um, for those of you who are tuning into the VOD later on, I didn't expect this to, to do this stream. But apparently they added Chimera to Horizon as like a, as like a fun April, April Fool's thing. And we're just screwing around. So here we are. Uh, if you're watching on the shorts feed, uh, that will still be live. No issues there. And I just got to set Discord there. No, it's not what I wanted. All right. Now we just got to fix my bot tricks chat and we're good to go. All right, and then we'll get um, we'll get Botrix chat up on the. The mainstream. All right. Freaking my my like. <laughs> My, like, cookie blockers and stuff are blocking me right now. All right. I don't need a chat bot. Oh, my gosh. Widgets. Chat. All right, there we go. All right. Uh, YouTube chat. And it's not working. All right, we're not gonna have any chat on screen. All right, so let me fill in some people because we are live on the main channel now. Um, I, I mentioned it a second ago, but I'll just um, elaborate a little bit more here. Um, we were live on the shorts feed, and it turns out Chimera and Cerberus are both up. Eric said they do drop loot. For real? <laughs> Who's fighting it right now? Oh, Feeder is. All right, I'm hoping I get an alliance here. I'm on Thief. I'm assuming we're going to need accuracy here. Um. Uh, I 
Got a new lightning mantle too. Okay, all right, so I'm here, I'm present. Hello, everybody. Uh, so Chimera, Cerberus, and likely um, Hydra are all up. And apparently they drop items and stuff. I don't know. There's not going to be any on-screen chat for the actual live stream. But who knows what the shenanigans will be tonight. We'll see. This is really weird because Aspie was coming up soon as well. So maybe this timing isn't great. And I'm dead. <laughs> what kind of shenanigans are we going to get up to, chat? Fucking dead. <laughs> I had my lightning resist on. All right, screw the lightning bow. I'm I'm gonna get my regular bow on. Try to provide some support. Uh, we haven't really done much combat yet, Yoba. Um, like, for example, I wasn't even in the party until just a minute ago. Um, like, th this is currently, like, something, like, you probably wouldn't see. Like, this is an April 1st thing, so, like, this is not going to be conducive to, like, normal gameplay. Um, oh, does my mainstream have a, uh, have a chat? Yes, it does. Okay, now I've got both chats open. I think it was killable and then the the mods the mods came and made it unkillable. I think is what happened. I might de-level to 74 tonight, Lurkiki. I've died a lot. No zoom. I can give you guys a little bit more. Whoa! Also, like, it's kind of dark, but we're just going to have to deal with that. Oh, we're getting warped? I'm going to go poke it. Ooh, I probably shouldn't poke it. Can we get to level 90? No, this is a level 75 cap server. Wait, wait. If I perfect dodge, I get 100% accuracy. What just happened? Oh, oh, my attack speed is so slow. Poke him in the butt. Oh gosh, this is slow. Oh, I hit it. All right, I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm just going to warp cuz this is this is not happening. <laughs> All right, we got 10 seconds so I can use my warp cudgel.
All right. We... <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know what to say about that. Obviously, it started... Oh, you guys couldn't see my alliance on the shorts, the, uh, the shorts feed. Um, it just started destroying us, and we couldn't damage it. And it instantly regen to 100% from wherever it was at. So, I don't know. Um, but we are going to be camping uh, some turtle tonight. Right, Rookie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you, you probably won't be seeing much... Much actual combat this stream. Only because... Um, we're just doing we're just doing things that aren't really that, but uh, the combat is really interesting in this game. So if you if you've never really experienced it, it's kind of like a mix between turn based and action based. Um, you have a certain attack speed, and that is like your your melee attack is like around, and that's a certain speed. But then everything else is kind of like off global cooldowns. So depending upon where a person's like knowledge is in like um, you know MMORPG mechanics. It's, um, I think, is, did RuneScape work that way as well? Maybe that's a good example. Um, but yeah, you have, like, your attack rounds, and then, then like, your skills and your abilities and all are kind of, like, off-globals with their own uh, unique timers. Uh, all right, take it easy, Marty. EverQuest was like that as well. All right, good call. Um, so I wasn't planning on streaming too late chats, but but what's gonna happen here um, is we are gonna go Camp Turtle. I I think that that's gonna be it's a good time. It's cool. It's old school. It's camping in H&M. But also, like, if you weren't here earlier, um, you might not have heard the story. But last night, like, a huge percentage of the people camping H&Ms all put on the, their, the same Link Pearl. And it was kind of meme -y. It was kind of fun. Um, so I am going to throw on that Link Pearl now. And we're going to go to Turtle. And we might get it. We might not. We might just hang out doing nothing for 40 minutes. We might... We might fight a big bad, like, who knows? It's kind of RNG right now. But, um, you know, honestly, to me, that sounds like a fun thing to leave the stream up for. So, uh, I am going to continue to stream this evening. Don't forget, if you haven't already liked the shorts feed, uh, we're only six likes away from the chocobo popping his feet out of the egg. If you're new to the stream, by the way, I'm Quetch. Um, I fun I primarily stream Final Fantasy XI um, and like other like Final Fantasies. Basically, my main channel is mostly Final Fantasy XI content, and uh, uh, primarily on the uh, private server Horizon XI. Eventually, uh. When it's closer to the new 14 expansion, I do want to be doing that because of the FF11 and 14 crossover. So if any of that is interesting to you, that's what my channel is all about. Did my sneak wear? Oh no.
Whoops. <clears throat> Alright, I'm not dead. I was saved by my fellow Link Shell members. Although, I think I would have been fine, but appreciate the help. <laughs> you never know. Alright, so, for more context, the place I'm entering right now is a, uh, is a valley where, once a day, a turtle spawns. Now, this, that turtle, after three days, has a chance to be the king version of the turtle. Um, we are currently on the sixth or seventh day, maybe eighth, sixth or seventh. And um, that means the chance of it being the king turtle is, uh, is higher, and that's the one that drops the better loot. So, uh, what's going to happen is, starting from a certain point, every 10 minutes, there's going to be um, a chance for it to spawn. After the set, after one hour, it is guaranteed to spawn, and it'll either be the lower quality or the king version of the turtle. Obviously, best case scenario is it's the king, and we get it. Um, but this, t this turtle has caused lots of drama for lots of different reasons. Uh, it's kind of a pain to fight. So again, tonight is totally RNG. It may be first window, it may be the lower quality turtle, and we may not even get it. It may be last window, like there's, it's, anyway. So buckle in, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, like three minute break, fill up my water bottle, um, grab a snack, use the restroom, and come back and then we're 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 here we're committed so um yeah stay tuned again if you haven't liked the shorts feed already please do so you gotta click the three dots at the top of the screen anyway i'll be back in a minute three minutes
Here we go. Crossover, yeah. There's a raid coming um, to Final Fantasy XIV that is based on Eleven. I don't think we know too much about it yet. See if I can pull up a... There's like only a screenshot. I think that's all we have. I think there was a small video. They did something with Aroha for a little while, but this is like bigger than that. Pull my alliance up. cooking. All right, let me see if I can find this image. Return to Vanadeel raid. There's really not much to show, but... Alright, I think this is the right page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so Echoes of Vanity Hill. There we go. Alright, let's pull this up. What am I camping? We are currently camping turtle slash uh, Ad adamantoise slash aspid. We're going to head to camp in a sec. It's not quite time yet, but it almost is. All right, here we go. Oh, the short feed isn't going to see that. You see? Yeah, Juditora. Jut, Jut, yeah, that's really all we know. But I do, I do want to show this if I can. No capture.
screen capture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Display capture. All right, here we go. Yeah, okay. So, the newest Alliance Raid series will be based on Final Fantasy XI titled Echoes of Vanadil. Players will step into Vanadil to explore the world of the acclaimed MMO predecessor to 14. The specifics of the raid were not discussed. But with 20 years of content, there's sure to be some great boss battles and gear players can acquire. First tier of this raid will be released in patch 7.1. So it's going to be like... Um, so 7.1 implies that it won't be with the main, uh, main game. Um, yeah, that means it's going to be in the first patch. So... The main game is coming out in July. The uh, the patch will be in probably September, October. So that'll give me um, enough time to do the main story. And then when this launches, I don't know. I want to go as hard as I can. Like, I'm not a great 14 player. But, like, for me, I don't know. This, this just sparks my interest. Now, there's also some, like, other cool stuff. Like, they're doing, like, a whole, like, cyberpunk uh, raid as well. And, um, like, who knows? That's me. I'm very off and on with this game, but, like, this gets me excited. Anyway. Horizon's still going? Yeah, Than. There's currently 2,700 people online, all single box. And it's on like a Monday night. And yeah, it's still COP. So it's a big meme in the community that Treasures isn't out yet. Um, but I would rather them release Treasures in a state where we are all... Um, we are all like able to enjoy it and play it, you know, than, than in like a, you know... Like, so part of, for those of you who don't know, like, Horizon was built on the foundation that players can... Players can recapture that sense of exploration that they had, that you that you had at any time any big content release ever came out. Um, and what, what got lost, what gets lost, is if you just release things as they were without tweaks to, like, you know, gear that was underpowered or jobs that couldn't quite function because they didn't have the tools that they ended up giving them later on. Like, all these things are small elements that add up to, like, you know, breaking, like, certain, like, meta towards making other fights more interesting, like, because they drop loot that they... and the loot sucked before, but it's good now. Um, you know, I, I just really want to see uh, Horizon Dev's implementation of, of, of Treasures and really just sink my teeth in and explore, um, you know, in a really, in a really fun, interesting way. Cause I quit, uh, OG retail. I quit back when treasures was rather fresh. So I've learned to love it aesthetically content wise. I think the con the content landscape of treasures of outer gone, second, third expansion in final fantasy's 11's history, um, aesthetically the content landscape, it's all so top tier. Um, in ways that I came to enjoy playing the game much later on uh, after I had quit and then came back when it was already, you could just do it solo, right? Not with a group. Um, so, like, I... As much as I want to see that content come out, I also want it to be something um, you know, well handled. So... Alright, let's get out to camp. <clears throat> oh yeah no I, I i agree with you there than like cop era is very is very limited in scope um so i could definitely see that point of view
Oh, I got a new shield. From the, uh... The Easter event. Let's see. Oh wait, which Link Shell do I have on? What drop we trying to get from Turtle? Um, so Turtle here drops Dalmatica, and it's the only place you can get it. It drops Dalmatica and uh, Wormel Body. Why is the video so narrow? It looks like it's made for TikTok. Valentino, I am currently streaming to both my short feed and my main channel. And so if you found this video on my main channel, but it's narrow, <laughs> friggin' YouTube doesn't know how to handle this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, if you're on my main channel, if you're on my channel, uh, there should be a stream that is normal shaped. <laughs> Did they do anything to make his shield useful or unique? Um, not that I'm aware of Riposte. Uh, I have been trying to get it for a while now. The one we had drop, because it's like a 15% drop rate, so you just don't get them that often. The one we had drop accidentally floored. So I have been wanting to get it and test it to see if there's anything unique. I don't think there is, but I will say this. It is the um, highest defense buckler-sized shield. So shields, based on their size, is how often they block but also how much damage they block. And um, I've been wanting to test that high defense buckler size shield on Warrior. Um, if we see one, I'll pick it up and I'll try, but, but you know. Nobody cared, nobody cared and it floored. I cared. <laughs> All right, let me see what time is like. Okay, got a couple minutes. <clears throat> and we got a load XI camera. Whoa! Oh yeah, I was trying to show you guys my shield. Look, it's a choke about. I got a chocobo dagger and a chocobo shield, and a mat's cap that isn't real. For context, right now we're just buffing up.
Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, why is Cerberus here? <laughs> I think... Does that have a true sight? It does have a true sight! <laughs> uh, it's killing people. <laughs> I love this right now. Why are we not claiming? Hmm. This is so troll right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't set my pearls properly. Oh, oh, it's right there. It's right there. Right now is the window where the, the turtle might appear. And it's a no-go. Yeah, typically the devs do. They'll they'll arise um, anybody who dies uh, when they do stuff like this. XI camera. There we go. Oh, it's on somebody else. <laughs> oh, he's dead. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm gonna eat dirt, chat. That's what's gonna happen here. Sorry about XI camera making this a terrible viewing experience, but maybe I'll just unload it between windows. Are MPK still a thing? Um. Not in the way, if you remember back in the day, they released a patch where mobs, when they were zoned, would despawn. Um, Horizon started with it where if you zone mobs, they just stand there. and Like the Dunes line. Um, the Dunes line, people would zone goblins and then the goblins would just massacre everybody. That is not here. It was here like the first like three weeks of the server's life. Yo, welcome, John. Yeah, we're currently uh, currently dealing with some April Fool shenanigans on this um, this private server here. Uh, 
as we uh, as we camp uh, Aspid Aspidoshalon. I wonder where Cerberus is. There it is. <laughs> Big dog in the distance. All right, so we're just chilling in uh chilling in between windows here. What the dog doing? Let me see. Is my uh, is my is my code still working? We should be at thirty likes according to my software. I'm not sure why. Somebody on the short speed, do me a favor and try hitting that like button uh, if you haven't already, because we should be at thirty, but it's not updated. Currently in the dunes, Horizon is so... Eh. Yeah, I can't say much about Eden. I don't know much about them. Um, this is the first, uh, first private server I've had. Yeah, I'm not sure. We're stuck at 30 likes. Anyway, appreciate all you who uh, you showed up to the short speed. Again, I'm still working on that stuff. But, uh... Not everything is... Not everything is working perfectly. It is what it is. I think I can I manually hatch it? I don't even know if I can. Let's try. Ah, that didn't work. <laughs> All right. I don't know, chat. Anyway, next window's up.
Eco and Garrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eco Warriors implemented in a really in a really nice way for like casual players here. I, I really I really like it. What is Eco Warrior? Eco Warrior is a lobby piece of content from original FF11 that um, <clears throat> that you would basically you get assigned by an NPC to like help the environment in in the near the city you, <clears throat> excuse me near the city you live, and uh, the whole point is to like exterminate you know bad guys. <clears throat> You just started Horizon last week. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm in front of it! I'm in front of it! <clears throat> yeah, so Eco Warrior, the way you want to... Hold on, we got a window here, and then I'll explain what you guys have to do. Because it's you really don't want to miss out if you're like... If you're like, especially if you're re relatively new, you don't want to miss out on the free EXP. Alright, remember, we're looking for a giant turtle here. Yeah, specifically not the giant three-headed hellhound, yeah. All right. All right, no turtle. All right, this is excellent question. I'm so glad we have even like two different people here who, who don't really know what you have to do. Um, I recommend starting with Eco Warrior Sandoria. I'm assuming that killing the dog is either a bad idea or not worth it. Chat, can you can you fill in Yoba here? Um, uh, so what you want to do is you want to start off in Sindoria because that's the easiest one. Uh, you go to the rest, the bar, the restaurant, the pub. I don't know what you call it. The one near the square towards the entrance of Southern Sandoria. You you probably know the one I'm talking about, or you've ran past it a million times. But there's an NPC in there, and they they say like, "Hey, are you interested in helping out? You know, the environment or whatever they say." And then you say yes, and um, then you have the quest. Now what you do? The lion's head in. Is that it? Wait, no, that doesn't sound right. Uh, the st steaming sheep, or is the steaming sheep in Bastok? Um, then you follow, you want to be in a group, you want to follow your, the rest of your group, because most people know where they're going, to Ordell's Caves. You get to Ordell's Caves, this is going to sound complicated, but I'm just laying it out, and then we'll go over, like, why it's not complicated. You go to Ordell's Caves, there's an NPC right in the front, Lion Springs, Lion Springs Tavern, thank you. There's an NPC right in the front, and what they do is they level cap you to 20. All right. Once you have your level cap, what you have to do is go with your group. You go to you go into the zone. You find a question mark spot. One person clicks it, and it spawns a mob that you all have to fight as an alliance at level twenty cap, and you have to kill it. Once it's dead, you check that question mark again. You get a ki. Then you take that ki back to the NPC who level capped you. Then you go back to the Lion Springs Tavern, okay? Now, I get it's a lot of steps, but... Uh, 
But the good news is um, it's really simple. And when you get back to the NPC, they give you 8,000 EXP for whatever job you're on. And a proper raid. You know, I wish this game had level capped raids. It's, it's okay, I'm going to rant about something. It's a genuine pet peeve of mine that they drop the ball on um, large large scale level cap um, uh, content. Garrison is okay. It's fine, but it's not difficult. And the drops are like, they're okay. But like, like, for example, if you do like PVP, which isn't currently on Horizon, um, uh, you'll you'll know that like 30 cat PVP is drastically different from 60 cat PVP, which is drastically different from 75 cat P PVP. And because there's something interesting about your kits at each of those levels, that um, that are just different and unique. Um, if gear scale, so I I would prefer non gear scaling. I want to comment on this because I, this is an important aspect of it. Non gear scaling, but we have a wardrobe dedicated to um, I don't know gear that is less than level seventy or something like that. Um, and that is because I think that the economy would be better off if we had level cap content that was challenging and fun. And you had to specifically gear well for it. So, uh, what that introduces into the game um, is, well, for crafters, first of all, for example, I'm a goldsmither, right? I'm going to make rings that you can equip at level 20 and HQ them. And, like, some people will buy them, but once you level up to a certain level, you just sell them yourself. Or, or sometimes you hold on to them. But basically, the market for lots of different lower level crafted gear gets saturated and becomes nothing. Um, uh, so what my proposal is, what we do is have decent level capped content and then have the ability to put like augments. So say you have a strength plus two ring, uh, you can augment it to be rare EX and now it's like you roll a random roll and whatever you get like maybe strength plus one, which is really strong if you're in 20 capped content, right? Um, or, for example, 40 cap content with the level 36 rings. And I'm just providing this as an example. There's a lot more out there. And now, all of a sudden, you're wanting to become best in slot for a certain level cap. Let's call it raid. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think Horizon could functionally... I don't think they have the manpower to do something like that and take away from the development of like the important things like Treasures of Outer Gone and H&Ms and stuff like that. But to me, that would be the ideal world to live in is like, um, you know... You got a random roll on your ring. It wasn't good. Screw it. You got to buy another one. And that feeds the crafts into, into feeding people's like, you know, wanting to get those minuscule improvements because right now those minuscule improvements don't apply to you until you're 75. For example, the, the abjuration gear, you want like the plus one abjuration gear because it is the best improvement you can possibly get to your character in anything that matters. And there's this whole like, like, a, again, a 30 kit and a 60 kit are vastly different from a 75 kit. And I, and I think that there's so much space to play in there that SC tried to do with Garrison. And I think the only place it was truly accomplished was in 30 cap PvP and possibly 60 cap PvP. Um, those two places, you may want to min-max your gear. WoW does this really well. Um, WoW has... Uh, I don't know. I don't know the specifics that well, but I've talked to friends who are really involved in this kind of stuff. And like the capped PvP is something that you try to min max for, whether it's your character build or what have you. Um, so I would love to see true because right now it, it's just BCNMs and Garrison, and neither of which are like BCNMs. You're not going to min max for freaking up in arms. You're just going to get the three people that can kill it, and you're going to get it done. Um, it's just like to me, it's a lost opportunity that. I think it'd be really fun in a game with such wide character progression, such horizontal character progression, where where there's such a variety of things out there that get left behind by um, by um, time, time and levels. 
storage is still an issue even when you get extra paid six mog slots on retail. Right. I think, um, I actually, th I, I like the word Oda used best here. A separate wardrobe for arenas would be awesome. And I, and that's kind of where my mind's at. So, actually, there's another thing here. I think there's a second place with a similar issue where the ball was dropped. Um, and that is a place that I think Horizon is going to play in and I'm excited about. And that is uh, Assault Gear. Ass um, assaults had gear you could buy that said things like, in Assault, get plus six attack. Or, or song plus one, or whatever it is, right? But like... But like, assaults were something you did, you got over with, and then you kind of moved on. If that same gear... Um, if that same gear were then functional in... Besieged? Nizal Isle? Now you're looking at a subset of gear that you're trying to m collect and maintain for its own content. Oh, I'm near Cerberus again. All right, we got window coming up. So like if you have a piece of gear, if you have like a ring that has refresh plus one on it, that's super busted. But if you can only use it in Nizal Isle, etc., then you're going to put your assault points and you're going to buy it because you're like, oh, I do a lot of Nizal, you know, for example, or or salvage. If that same gear continues into salvage, now we're looking at a very interesting gearing progression that um, tre Treasures wanted to do, I think, but didn't didn't um, didn't uh, provide on. OK. Window. No turtle. Now that is a that is a space where I have hope that Horizon uh, plays in and plays in really well in a really interesting and fascinating way. Um, <clears throat> I know this is a far cry from the Eco Warrior conversation we started with. I hope that uh, for those of you who wanted who didn't know what Eco Warrior uh, was and wants to do it, I definitely recommend getting into it. Otherwise, you're leaving um, you're leaving EXP on the table every week and also 10k Gil. It also rewards 10k Gil. Uh, Super good, especially if your playtime is light. It's the best way to make progress by logging into the game only a handful of times a week. Um, you definitely don't want to miss it. Fight! All right. Um, yeah, apparently my chocobo hatching mechanism uh, broke. You know what? I bet it broke when I went live on my my main uh, my main stream. But appreciate all the likes. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, new viewers, to the sh the shorts feed. <clears throat> yeah, and John, I'll I'll actually cap that off with one more thing. Technically speaking, if you read old guides on um, Eco Warrior, like on like BG Wiki and stuff, they are technically correct in like the way things function the difference is horizon allows you to get rewarded once a week um uh for them so if you're curious about it mechanically you can always check an old guide yeah i think i'm gonna have to have uh have to manually hatch it here coder all right I gotta, I gotta do it the brute force way that I didn't, I didn't want to do, but. Let's see. Um, it should be this one. No, how about this one? There we go. <laughs> Hatched it for you, chat. All right, I know for a fact we're at like 35, even though it says I have a whole lot more um, likes than that. So. Let's just do 35 out of 50.
Eco Warrior wasn't repeatable in retail. I believe the weekly lockout to to Eco Warrior was in retail. Because what Eco Warrior did reward you with um, is an EXP scroll. It was the bad one though. It was like the one that gives you like a thousand, it's not even a thousand EXP. It's like, it's like a range of 200 to 800 was the original reward. But as is pointed out, 8,000 EXP is on a level 20 job. That's like a level and a half, if not two levels. Um, to help you, it's especially useful if you time it correctly to get you through level ranges that your particular job doesn't handle well. Um, you can just use that EXP to give that job a boost. So, um, so I think SC had the right idea. And, and, you know, if you think of Eco Warrior, it's a level 20 cap thing, right? And it was part of the base game. I don't know if that EXP scroll was ever quite worth your time. But when you're looking at, you know, level 50 being the cap, etc., they obviously had an intent to make this a weekly thing people got together to do in order to get the reward at the end, which was the EXP scroll, and then just left it. There's a, there's a lot of like leftover artifacts, relics of, you know, things SE tried and just didn't work and never went back to. Um, and I think, and I think this is one of them. So that's the cool, that's the kind of interesting play space I like to see uh, Horizon like playing in or any private server, any private server can play in these spaces. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really cool stuff being done out there. I'm just not involved in those servers, you know? Mobile XI for 4-1. This is, this is FF11 mobile you're watching right now, chat. Uh, <laughs> the problem is it's view only. There's no participation unless you include hatching a chocobo. <laughs> Camping a turtle. Uh, I need to ship a text really quick. I hate being on my phone when I'm when I'm live. It just feels so like dirty. All right. It's a random scroll from one to two k. It might be. So the, the the reason I was unsure, Edgemy, is because Horizon boosted the EXP values of the scrolls, I think by 3x across the board. And um, the scroll we get is like three to six. So that's that's actually probably right. Yeah, so you get the boosted scroll here, you get the 8k EXP flat, and you get 10k gil. It's just like Again, for especially for any if you're if you're like casual or just getting started, it's like you It's like miss missing, it's just a waste. Anyway. All right. All right, one more text. Yeah, that's why I use it, or that's what I use it for, is like whatever side jobs I'm leveling or, or sub jobs, um, I'll just slap on that that big EXP boost and, you know, move on with my day. It's been helpful for getting Paladin up. I, 
I don't know what I'm going to do for Paladin from 60 to 75. I have no idea. Like, is it all sky parties? Like, what? It, where do people take Paladin? Ooh, Cape Terrigan is a good one, actually. Because that's like... Cape Terrigan is like... You want a real tank there. Like, you take a real tank, you take like a Thief for skill chain, you take like a Dark Knight, um, some supports. Yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah. Tree wouldn't be bad either. I'm really not looking forward to 60 to 75 on Paladin. Ex I, I mean, except for the fact that I enjoy it. But, like, it's going to be a slog. Mm -hmm. In case you're tuning into the stream recently, by the way, Cerberus is running amok at Aspie Camp. <laughs> Oh, Calbrit. Goodbye, Calbrit. All right, this turtle window. Good luck, us. Turtle. I don't see it. Damn it. Oh, Cerberus is on somebody. All right. So Turtle's here. It's not ours. Good news and bad news. Which do you want to hear first, chat? So this is the King version, by the way, for those of you who were just learning about this stuff earlier. Um, so the good news is we're not out of the equation yet. The bad news is, oh God. <laughs> the, the bad news is it could be upwards of an hour before we find out. Oh my gosh. Wind Elemental on Snite. I'm getting far away from this. Oh, oh god. This is... I think it's funny, but it's also kind of like... <laughs> I 
shitty. <laughs> Chad, are you still with me? Are you seeing? Are you seeing what's going on? Right, Kerm. That's kind of what I'm feeling. He's like, it's kind of disrespectful to our time, but it is funny. And I think that's the thing bullies experience. <laughs> Alright, uh, I want to provide some more context for this fight and why I said it's probably going to take an... It, it'll take an hour until we find out what's up. So, first of all... First of all, you need to know. This fight has been changed from its original version. Um, basically, the way to kill it is you need to skill chain it and then magic burst it with uh, ice magic. And um, when you do that, <clears throat> when you do 2,000 damage, it, this is what we think. This isn't perfect because we've had issues with this mob. 2,000 damage, it goes into its shell. 2,000 more, it comes out of its shell. If you do not pull it out of its shell, it begins regening its health. And it regens about 15%. Uh, no, it regens almost exactly 15% before it comes out on its own. And as far as, we, as we've experienced, you cannot pull it out of its shell uh, with damage after that point. You, you need to magic burst in such a way that it goes into its shell and back out, essentially. Okay. <clears throat> because, so two magic, that's, so 15 health percent health that it regens is roughly two sets of magic bursts. So the issue is if you mess up too many of those bursts in a row, or not even in a row, if you mess up too many during the course of the fight, the regen that it does, basically, you, every step forward is two steps back. Now, why is that a problem? Well, after one hour from time of claim, this mob goes on a rampage and starts doing 9999 damage, cap damage. Well, cap for this era. Well, I don't even think that's capped. It just does nine. It, it does nines. Lots of nines, okay? You can't survive it. To an area effect. And then it attacks incredibly fast. Uh, it, it's basically unkillable after one hour. Okay? So, what happens is, one hour goes by, and if you have screwed up your magic burst, whatever, too many times, you didn't kill it. It then proceeds to kill everyone who it has hate on, period. Anybody who's ever touched it, looked at it, cured a party member... You could be outside the party. If you cured one of them, you're now on its hate list, okay? So it basically murders everybody. And then what happens is it needs to go, um, it needs to go yellow. Its name needs to go from pink or whatever that is. Uh, it's the rage timer, yes, thank you. Um, to yellow. Once that goes to yellow and it no longer is looking for a person because it can be yellow, but it can still be chasing somebody down to kill them. Okay, so it has to both go yellow and it has to be not looking for anybody. Once that happens, it'll begin to regen its health at every 10 seconds, like 10% uh, every 10 seconds or something like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, what hap then what happens is once it reaches full health, rage leaves. How do we know that? Well, at the one hour mark when it rages, in say chat, it's like, I'm going to kill you all. And then when it regens its HP to 100%, it says, I'm no longer angry. Okay? When you, basically when you see that message, or otherwise, um, <clears throat> um, you know, you can claim it. Now the problem with that, 
we're gonna get to the we're gonna get to the very end case problem here. Is it goes to 100%. It says in chat like I'm ready to be claimed. The problem is because of the way server ticks happen. Um, you want to try to claim it as it's hitting 100. You may even want to claim it before the message appears in chat because it being ready to be claimed and it's saying that thing in chat because of server ticks are not necessarily the same exact thing. All right. So what's going to happen is <clears throat> it kills everybody. It regens to 100 and then there's going to be a mad dash for people at like 99%. They're going to use their spell or their job ability or whatever to try to claim it. But then they're going to die. So um, this is a pattern we've experienced multiple times. Um, and we've had middling success on. Uh, <clears throat> so we ain't raging this, bro. <clears throat> um, I don't think you guys are necessarily going to rage. I think that the biggest reason I'm bringing it up is because Cerberus was involved also. Um, but like, also, we got to wait for the kill. So that's why I said we have upwards of an hour. The reason there would be an hour is because of a potential rage. Um, but good luck to y'all. And uh, that's basically the fight. So it's both a DPS management and a DPS check. <laughs> the reason you mostly ever hear of a fight being one or the other is because um, I think that's better game design, Yoba. Um, I <laughs> What's up, Ara? It's Ara, right? Can't see the name tag. <laughs> the reason uh, I actually have some qualms about this fight in particular is because it's too many factors for a fight that you only get to fight once, twice a month tops. I would love this fight if it were in an instant situation um, or in a rep repeatable situation such as H&M. Um, I would like to see this the mechanics on this tweak ever so slightly. Just because <clears throat> I, and I'm sure other people in my chat, and a lot of the people standing here right now, have spent multiple hours at this mob uh, before. So, um, but yeah, this is the thing we came for. The big dog is just a is just a hoax. Oh, it's Coder. Oh, what's up, Coder? Um. So anyway. It's already at, what is this, 83%? They haven't uh, stuck it in its, sh in its shell yet. Which is a good sign. Um, it sounds like Cerberus might have got poofed. I'm seeing an LS chat. People trying to MPK. I will say, there's not a lot of... <laughs> at the various H&M camps, there's not much you can do to MPK, but I think Cerberus is definitely... <laughs> definitely a way that that can be done. Um, anyway, now that explanations is over, I think you guys have liked this stream enough on the shorts end of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and manually hatch my ch manually hatch the chocobo uh, as we hopefully wind down on the stream this evening. Uh, core trigger, test trigger, and bam. Yeah, I think it broke when uh, when I went live on my. on my actual channel. Oh, it's in his shell. Regen time, baby. Yeah, that's more Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> The Evilith stuff Repost is asking about. Um, they haven't specifically mentioned Evoliths, um, like like synergy and whatnot. Um, but there was, I think, when we interviewed Eric on the Level Sync podcast, 
I think that's where he mentioned um, uh, wanting to do augments in the future. Um, and they're definitely planning. So augments on gear in general, which we don't have any currently, but like, uh, I'll, I'll show you guys an example. So say you have like um, Hecatome Mittens. So the Eviliths were... Uh, basically, you could take this piece of gear and you could get a random chance to get an, um, uh, an extra stat or whatever on it. No augments, you don't like them. So I like augments a lot when they're done properly. When they're not, they're awful. So in modern retail, there's some situations where augments are handled well and are interesting and like they feel good to pursue after and then there's situations where they're absolutely not and um so um i don't know how they're going to handle it when they're going to handle it but one of the th one of the reasons the conversation came up is because um they had also asked like the player base had suggested hey can we put signatures on cursed gear like hecatome mittens and um they said look we actually would love that idea. The problem is a signature on a piece of gear actually takes up an, a slot that an augment would would um, be applied. Because like each piece of gear has X number of um, like text slots available to it. I think it's three. And um, the moment you take one up with a signature is you then have one less um, augment you can apply. So <clears throat> some private servers really bank on the fact that augments are um, are like a prevalent portion of the way they handle progression. Um, so uh, personally, I think augments are really important to the economy. Um, I would just like to see them handled well. So the whole like, so, so, Design wise, right? Think about this. Design wise, if you make augments tied to the tatters like they did, which was like, in order to augment my Dalmatica, I need Dalmatica tatters. That affects the uh, gameplay loops from pieces of content in in some ways. Whether those ways are negative or positive. Um, you know, I'm not going to try to answer that question here, but it, it affects the gameplay loops. So, for example, players who are finished on Sky Gear may want to go back to Sky in order to get Tatters to sort of um, uh, <clears throat> sort of recycle that gear. Yeah. So conceptually, it was done by SE in order to bring players back into that old content. Now, if Horizon's plan is to allow people, okay, so imagine a year from now. You signed up for Horizon with some friends. Your goal was to make a link shell, get into Sky, and do old Sky content. And that is still <clears throat> relevant and interesting uh, for players to do. Do you want to maintain that? Or do you do what SE did and make, okay, Sky's been power crept. We're in treasures now. Uh, we're going to go spend a weekend, and we're going to get a bunch of tatters for people. Um, those are two different design philosophies. I think... I would rather a situation where farming sky isn't relevant to me anymore, so I get to leave, but then the players who recently joined the server three months, six months ago or whatever, that that's the thing they want to do with their time, um, it's available and there for them. Um, you know, not just like on farm by like the highest, most, and most, most enfranchised player base. <clears throat> I, again, I don't have an opinion on the, which is, Better, I would just rather be uh, that style. So to me, I, w I wouldn't be looking at tatters. I would be looking at items in the economy that you want to try to um, su either supply or regulate. So a good example is uh, <clears throat> like elemental ores. Um, uh, if you have, if you have say an augment on Neptunal gear, needs like earth ore now all of a sudden you've increased um you've increased the desirability of, of an item in the economy and you've tied that towards the endest level of contents um progression so um is horizon considering power creeping and treasures and that is the eternal question 
how how much power vertical power creep do you give in a horizontally progressive game and um i think the answer is some <clears throat> uh I don't know. I think this, these are really interesting questions and I, uh, you know, I'd like to see where, where things go here. Horizon doesn't know what they want to do. I, I think they do. I think there are questions that are being answered as they go. Um, like you can't have all the answers up front. Um, well, we'll see. I think when Treasures releases, look what they want to do to Turban. I, I mean, I, I said from day one, Turban needs to be nerfed before I even knew they were going to do anything to it. I think five haste is too much. I mean, literally the only other 5% haste piece of gear is tied to the fact that you have Dragoon set as a sub job. Like that is situationally interesting to me. Turban just going on on your head for, no matter who you are is like, I don't know. It's kind of cheesy to me. <clears throat> I think when you look at, uh, when you look at home on Zuketo, um, for example, home mom, like why? Uh, oh, Hidate. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Now Hidate. I think, I think Hidate could have used the nerf. Fifteen decks, five haste is like that. That looks like stats from Abyssia era. <clears throat> right. You. You can't ever produce an item better than uh, better than uh, Haidate. Like you, you, unless you change fundamentally the way you structure your your server. I mean, SE ran up to this, and it's why they increased the level cap. Like you, the itemization was too ingrained. Um, I don't think haste needs to be nerfed. What I, the thing about haste, and it's it's actually a, a, a fascinating part of this game, is like. I think that reaching haste cap with your gear is like one of the most important pieces of gear progression for any melee. And I think it should stay that way. Um, you know, you acquiring your extra 1% here or there is like a difference of like, do I make sub job choices? Do I pay for HQ um, um, uh, dusk gloves? And those kind of choices are the, like, they're really interesting in terms of your overall in terms of your overall gear progression. Working up your home mom set into a speed belt, you know, etc. Um, and Wallera Turban just like shortcutted that. Um, my opinion is when Wallera Turban was made, it was made to sell to sell expansions. I think it was literally added into the game so more people would be interested in treasures, and I, I think it was heavy handed. And I think it needs a nerf. Um, how far are we, are we into this? And they're, they're at 85. All right, I finally get to respond to that text I sent earlier. They need for the need for accuracy and haste. So make a gear choice like earth and gear over haste gear. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. That's sort of part of the overall makeup of gear progression. Uh, the the balance of accuracy versus haste is the kind of like I deal with a lot on thief because and and I'll deal with even more once I get manned out. Because the relics for one-handers come with 20 attack, while the relics for two-handers come with 20 accuracy. Which means that the two-handers get to just go balls out with their haste sets in, like, higher level content. Um, so, again, to me, that is interesting. Um, Hidate is the worst offender. It is literally the best of both.
Hey, should add a small penalty to accuracy, nothing crazy, but enough for you have to balance. Uh, I mean, I, I do have to balance plates on Thief. Like, like specifically non, non two-handed relics do. Um, that's why I have three tiers of accuracy toggle is because basically you have to sacrifice haste for accuracy. So I think that is already happening. Um, you know, for example, here's my max haste set. I'm in three, seven, 10, 13, 16, 20. I'm in 20 here. Now, the moment I go into my higher accuracy set, I'm in 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm in 13 percent. So I lose 7 percent in order to gain, in order to gain like 7, 22, uh, like 24, 26 accuracy. Do I have merits and decks for more accuracy? No, but I don't think the four merits we get in era, five merits for two accuracy is worth it over losing all that strength. Strength is just so strong. Strength affects every melee hit and it affects mercy stroke. Um, so anyway, so I, I lose, you know, six haste in order to produce like 20 something accuracy. And like, that's only one tier. My other tier is like, I have almost no haste at all. I have nine haste. <laughs> Strength is strong. <laughs> uh. Right. If you're melee, you want to do strength. Uh, hands down. Because, like, literally, like, even just F strength alone, uh, base damage, basically affecting your base damage based on your strength versus... Uh, the mob's vitality and a function of your weapon's weapon rank. So, um, which is what strength affects, is like, oh, is like one damage per melee hit per hand on every attack round, let alone your weapon skill mod. And it's just too strong. Um, I'm paying more attention now. Spam Voke it. Uh, I'm a thief, bro. <laughs> I can only screw up so many times before I'm a problem. <laughs> I didn't grab a snack earlier and I'm regretting it now. I have apples. I 
I'm gonna go get an apple chat. <laughs> apples? Why do you talk about apples? The subject matter was dolphins. I'm gonna go get an apple beer back. Enjoy the festivities. Stupid turtle. Oh, body bolts, yeah. Um, have you have you have you acquired any intelligence gear yet, Kenneth? I know at your level it's going to be tough to come by, but basically the way body bolts work is they use the difference in your your intelligence versus your enemy's intelligence, and so like. You're not going to hit EXP targets like you would have in retail back in the day. But if you're farming like bees, you'll you'll drain for a bunch. Um at 75, I've got a full I've got an int set that is pretty balanced between ranged accuracy and intelligence. So maybe like an extra 15 intelligence or whatever in my set. And I can um uh, I can drain when I'm farming. But not not on the only high level mob that I can drain well is um, Gigas because Gigas have tiny brains. Yeah, I would say 
it's probably not worth it at your level unless you unless you're like farming something where so if you're like farming like eps at your level you might see a benefit from getting intelligence um gear for your specifically for your drain bolts only but that's like really specific and like anything ep you're farming right now when you're like level 50 or whatever you won't need those drains anyway so i don't really wouldn't really recommend anybody really work on that set until they're 75. If you're just tuning in, I know this is the most, enga most engaging fight uh, that we're not actually in, but uh, we're just waiting to see if this turtle dies. But uh, yeah, we had a good um, April Fool's Day here. There was some dev shenanigans with some high-level mobs. Um, if you haven't checked out today's podcast, definitely, definitely no trolling going on there. Um, if you don't know, I do a Final Fantasy XI podcast called Level Sync. It's here on YouTube. You can also find it on Apple Music and Spotify. Applying to one more text, and the phone's away. Throw it across my room. <laughs> no, I won't do that. I've only got one phone. All right. My chat window seeing everyone's actions. I, f I filter it depending upon what I'm doing. Weird Dragon, no friends has it.
how am I able to zoom out so far? I think you might be a little bit further behind on the stream there, Masia. Whenever you get here, it's XI camera, yeah. Can I please say what? <laughs> I don't know what that's from, Goblin Buns. Oh, wait, Resident Evil, yeah. Duh, Jill. <laughs> Wait, is this are you creating an AI of my voice? malevolently eating the apple. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Wesker, he's got, like, the glasses and the, like, slick haircut, right? Yeah. I think the only Resident Evil I own is... Four? My brother's a huge... He, like, collect. He, like, collects, like, Resident Evil merch and stuff. Willing to develop an AI for the cutscenes in this game. Oh, that's an interesting thought eclipse. You mean like an AI, like AI voiceovers? Interesting. There was that, um, did you guys see the, there was an AI, um, like NVIDIA, what's it called, flashback or something maybe? I forget, but it, it like takes like older games and like uh, uses AI to like upscale them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yo, I was watching some uh, Link to the Past speedruns the other day. I was watching uh, Andy. What was he? What was he racing? Uh, bingo. Andy was racing a bingo in a, in a tournament. What was it? right here in my history somewhere i go in and out man i'll get i'll just get addicted for like three months straight to link to the past rando oh 
Pog Champion Season 10. Yeah, especially if a good tournament is going on, I'll just get hooked. And then I'll be off it for a couple months. Yeah, I, I like... I watch so much of his stuff. The only thing I don't watch is, like, I don't really have any connection to... Um, to Super Metroid. So I don't really dig the Super Metroid rando uh, crossover stuff. But, like, otherwise, like, tournaments and all that, it's a lot of fun to watch. I've tried some vanilla, um, vanilla rando seeds. FF1 rando. I've seen a, I've seen a good deal of that. I, I keep giving it another shot because like part of me, part of me like kind of likes it. But it doesn't, it's not as sticky for me as Link to the Past. Like, and I keep trying to figure out why. Like, I've tried watching uh, FF6 Rando, I've tried watching FF5 Rando, FF4 Free Enterprise, FF1, which they do a lot of, there's like a lot of tournaments for FF1. Um, I keep expecting, like, I'll find something that really, like, I really enjoy, and it's just like, it's okay for me. But, like, it's same thing with, like, Ocarina of Time, like, I don't really care for it. But Link to the Past, keep coming back to. Yeah. It's just like the it's like the the puzzle of the solve along with the mechanics of the game just kinda like line up in a in a sweet spot for me. Like a lot of like FF Rando is Did you find this key item? And like, like, I guess like FF5 for me is probably the closest one to like, oh, you got to figure out what job comp you want to use. But there's like a handful of like really powerful strats that just kind of get utilized. And so like the solve isn't as interesting to me. And that is like probably the most interesting one. Uh, six has uh, the relics. And that is kind of, kind of scratches that itch. 14 mins, you guys got this. Or not, he's in his shell. Oh no. The newer glitches are cool too. In uh in which, Edge of Me. Have I tried Zelda Parallel Worlds? No, I've never even heard of that. A fan-made LTTP? Is it like a I mean, that, that describes a lot, actually. Um, I guess it's just a ROM hack, yeah? Or or is it like a standalone EXE or something? No, I, I've not heard of it. I'll tell you what I, what I did play recently, though. This is really cool. It might be some crossover here with some people. Um, oh, Aspie's floating around. I played... Um, there's a ROM hack for Legend of Zelda 1. Uh... And it's uh, it turns Legend of Zelda one into like a um, a roguelike. Oh, Icebreaker and the New Swamp Palace stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rom hack complete overhaul way harder. Oh, that sounds really cool. Actually, I'm gonna look this up. Um, find something to play on my um my uh, Asus, my ROG ally. Uh, parallel worlds.
Everything is brand new. Dungeons, overworlds, etc. This sounds really sick. Wow, they had their 10 year anniversary recently. <laughs> uh, I wonder if I have to patch this. I, I really don't feel like patching a ROM right now. Let me see. Is Aspie dead? No, 12%. Captcha? Friggin' Captcha. You have a parallel worlds on cartridge? Did you did you order it custom or did you order like a flash cart and put it on yourself? Whoops. Custom order, sick, sick. Um, but yeah, Legend of Zelda 1, but it's roguelike, right? So if you've played Legend of Zelda 1, you kind of know the gist of it, the overworld, and then the eight dungeons, and then, you know, you have to fight Ganon, etc. Um, the way this works is you're just in the first dungeon room. And no matter what door you go through, you're now in room two. And then you have to, like, you have to kill all the mobs in that room, and then you can exit out of any of the doors. Now you're in room three. So there's no backtracking, right? There's no puzzle to it. It's just you're in one room, then you're in the next. And whichever door is closest to you and shortest, that's the one you want to take because, you know, you can race this, okay? So two people playing the same seed would race this. So anyway, you're in room three, and then maybe you discover, you know, you get to room 15, and then maybe you discover a sword upgrade. But sometimes you do, sometimes you get a boomerang. Now you have to navigate rooms like 16, 17, 18, and so on with just the boomerang and you're like level one sword. And then maybe you get a mail upgrade. So you don't know how it's going to be. And then like you want to earn rupees along the way. And then uh, uh, okay, occasionally you find a shop and they'll sell like your next sword upgrade or whatever it might be. It's, it's all RNG. And you may decide to spend your rupees on that. You may not have collected enough rupees because you didn't like, you know, you just didn't, pick them up or you spent too many arrows right so it's really fun then you get to room 255 and that's where ganon is with the princess or with with zelda and then uh by then you would have gotten the silver arrows and you could defeat ganon um it's a fun little little rom hack if you die that's it there's two different modes actually there's a race mode where if you die you go back to your last boss fight so there's like boss fights every like 30 floors or something, 50 floors maybe. Um, and then there's like normal mode, which is like, if you die, that's it. You just reset and it's roguelite, it's back again. Um... Portable mini games, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, that's it. Throw down. We're playing uh, ALTTP Rando while while we're camping Aspie. A oh, box art and everything, sick. I was thinking about ordering um, some custom boxes, well, custom, but like repro boxes for my um, Pokemon games. Oh, 2%! And it's out. GG's. Oh, it's glitching. Is it? No, it's out. Yeah, it was close. I mean, if you guys, you guys probably had enough leeway to probably do, do have it go in its shell two more times, maybe. Maybe, maybe one, honestly. All 
All right, GG's, y'all. I'm out of here. Uh, all right, friends. <laughs> Good times out at Turtle Camp. Um, but uh, I guess I'm going to close up my stream here. I didn't even mean to stream on my main my main channel. I hope that people who watch this VOD later on will get to see the Cerberus shenanigans. Um, people on the shorts, everybody actually, don't, uh, don't hesitate to drop a like on this video before you go. Um, it's been a pleasure. I'm not streaming on Twitch today. Um, so there will be no rating and I'm not even I don't even my end screen my end screen might work it, it, It'll work for the main stream, but it won't work for the um, for the shorts feed. So um, thanks again for stopping by And I'll see y'all in the next one. All right, peace out That worked kind of oh, oh god. Oh everything's broken <laughs> <laughs>